Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text this morning for our consideration, taken from the book of Deuteronomy, we read from the fourth chapter, begin with the 23rd verse. Be careful not to forget the covenant of the Lord your God that he made with you. Do not make for yourselves an idol in the form of anything the Lord your God has forbidden. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. After you have had children and grandchildren have lived in the land a long time, do you then become corrupt and make any kind of idol, doing evil in the eyes of the Lord your God and provoking him to anger? I will call heaven and earth as witness against you this day, that you will quickly perish from the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. You will not live there long, but will be certainly destroyed. The Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and only a few of you will survive from among the nations to, walk, to which the Lord will drive you. There you will worship man-made gods of wood and stone, which cannot see or hear or eat or smell. But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him, if you look for him with all your heart and with all your soul. When you are in distress and all these things have happened to you, then in later days you will return to the Lord your God and obey him. For your Lord, the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you or forget the covenant with your forefathers, which he confirmed to them by oath. This is God's word. Your friends in Christ, the text this morning is all about a falling away from our Lord Jesus. Those years or those times in our life when we, we stray from our Lord and, and the Lord bids us to return, a common term that is used is backsliding. We, we drift away from the Lord. It's a very, very common problem that has, well, generationally, it, it just goes on and on and on. Perhaps one of the reasons for that is that uh, it's, it's not possible to pass on from one generation to another faith. We can pass on a witness, we can put into the next generation the things of God, his word, and that the word work faith into the heart. It's the unseen, it's the unknown, in, in so far as I, I, I can't understand all the things of God, how he works. But yet, as we mature in our lives, we also mature in our faith, because we become more and more convinced of the one in whom we believe and trust the one who has given his life to pay for all of our sins. But to pass that on to our children is not something I can do or you can do. It is something that the Holy Spirit does through the Word. And for that, people will go exploring in their life, venturing off to see other things, have their minds challenged, so to speak, and so far, as, as the things of God, the things of religion. It's a very common thing. It's a devastating thing. But nevertheless, it is the part of the sinful nature. We are constantly in a state of strain. And the Lord brings us back through the hearing of the word. You know, how do we begin to assess what the solution to a problem like that is? We, we know the simple answer. Return to the Lord. Make the Lord's word a part of your life. Make it a daily part of your life where you're concentrated on those things. I think a lot of times, and I've said this to you so many times already in the past, people don't get up in the morning and say, I'm going to stray from the Lord today. Yeah, today's the day. This is it. I'm, I'm, I'm straying from my Lord. No, it is a gradual thing that happens over time. Sometimes things speed it up, but nevertheless, it is always there. It isn't falling away. Perhaps one of the reasons is we don't see the things of our Lord as being that important. And as a result... Uh, we don't put a lot of that to memory. I am not going out on a limb on this and saying that um, all of you that have had catechism classes with me, those weren't the most important event of your week. It wasn't as though I can't wait to go to catechism class today. Wow, that's the most important part of my week. You, you don't feel that way. As you're scrambling to memorize your passages on the car and ride in, and then you, know, you come in there and, and such, and, and, and you don't. And as a result, we don't take it serious, so we easily forget the things of God. Ask any young couple the first time he or she forgot their anniversary. I didn't think it was that big a deal. You do now. It's important. From now on, you probably will remember that. And so it is with God. We, we don't 
think it's so terribly important so we don't remember all the blessings that God has given to us in the course of our lives. And then also, as we, we venture out into the world, so to speak, the world doesn't like the things of God. As a matter of fact, everything is in opposition to the things of God. All the treasures and pleasures and cares of the world are constantly telling you, indulge in me, indulge in me. Why would you want to so limit your life? And so the strained heart enjoys that. Why fight it? Go along with the flow. Be a part of the modern generation. Be a part of the times. And we find ourselves becoming so occupied in things and so little occupied in the things of the Lord. You look at a text like this and say, idolatry? Oh, no. I would never engage in idolatry. Ah, you do practically every day. You make yourself an idol, you make your money an idol, you make your job an idol, you make your kids an idol, you make, you know, all, all types of things. All those get first attention before God. And then when we snap out of it, so to speak, we come to our realization that, no, the most important part of my life is my God and my relationship to Him. But in the meantime, I've allowed myself to drift away and, and become caught up in the world because the more time I'm spending there, the less time I'm spending with the Lord. The more time I'm being indoctrinated by the world, the less time I'm being, being fed the, the spiritual truths of God's word and the blessings that he has given to us. The Lord said, you're, you're about to enter this land, and uh, as Moses was now recalling with the people and uh, what God had said and how you're going to enter this land and you're going to have your children here and your grandchildren and you're going to have so many blessings, but don't forget the Lord your God. Oh, we won't forget him. Oh, we won't forget him. No way, no how. Ah, uh, what? A month too late? Doesn't take very long. I'm going to go back to how I started. I can't pass faith along to someone. I can tell you about it. I can tell you the tools. I can tell you the workings. I can tell you the means of grace that create and sustain faith. But as for the rest, these things I learn anew to make them my own. And so teachers teach. And we have catechism classes. And we emphasize vacation Bible school and Sunday school classes because this is an opportunity to impress upon the young minds the things of God and what is of value. I had a pleasant privilege this past week of a couple of kids that will probably come just for vacation Bible school and not during the course of the year. They've come a number of years now. And the one just made a comment. I remember that from last year. Wow, great. The seed is planted. The seed is planted. And now may God cause it to grow. When one has fallen away and don't think it can't happen to you, just a, a couple of little phrases in our text. From there, if you call out to the Lord, from there, I like that thought. Um, you know, there I am. I, I'm confused in my mind as to what things are of value and importance in life. And the Lord says, from there, you know, call it to me. Bring, bring to memory again. Bring to mind the things of God. I had in my morning thought this morning something about this, this idea of from, from there. Uh, most of us, can remember growing up, Sunday mornings meant getting ready and going to worship at our congregation, our own congregation. That was just that was just the way it was. Uh, we can remember sitting in those Sunday school classrooms and the teacher bringing us a lesson and they're holding up this sheet and they're pointing to something and there's a passage that goes with it and there's some questions. That was very much a part of our life. We, we remember the extended family where the brothers and sisters and their spouses and such were all pretty much supportive and a part of that. Is that the way it is today? Do we sometimes get a, quite a bit of opposition from our own family with regard to our faith? Do we get opposition from our friends? Do we find ourselves sometimes in some awkward situations among those whom we love and, and whom we desire to have around us in our lives? And, 
And yet, if you, as soon as you start mentioning anything about your faith, um, there is mockery and ridicule and, and, and that. These things are a very real part of our lives now. And, you know, what has happened? Why has, why has it gone from, from one extreme to another now? These are the times that we live in. And so the Lord says, when, when these things happen, do we then sit down and feel sorry for ourselves? Do we pout and, and wish things were differently? Or wish things were different? Or do we cry out to the Lord? Do we turn to him and say, Lord, we know that with you all things are possible. We, we know that as, as much as we've turned away from you, it is so very possible for those to turn back to you because you are there with welcoming arms. You said, I, Lord, your God, I'm a merciful God. I welcome you when I could come back. Come with, back with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. And a lot of times that is the case, and that's why we are so uh, overjoyed, because those things that we learn as a child, they become something that are, are very much a part of our memory as we're older. And, and we remember that, and it's like, um, you know, I, I want my kids to have that. I, I want them to at least have the experience of, of knowing that, you know, of a Sunday school class, of a vacation Bible school, of sitting with the family in worship, being a part of that. I want to press that upon because we want to pass on to the next generation those precious truths. And we do that by, first of all, by being an example to them. I appreciate all the helpers that we had this week for Vacation Bible School. It's so important for the children to see that this is important to the adults, too. And we had a number of young people there. It's very important that the children see that this is important to the youth. It'll you know, just blow it off and say, ah, you know, that's a waste of time. You know, I got other things. I got better things to do. I got more important things to do. My time is precious. Ah. Just made an idol out of your time. See how easy it is? See how quick it happens? Where our heart is, that's where our treasure will be. We know that. We understand that. And it takes being reminded of that, though over and over again so that we don't forget so that we don't treat as being relatively unimportant in my life for matters of God so if we, um, we we love these announcements where we see a baby is born oh so wonderful congratulations oh we're so happy for you um, the baby was baptized oh okay people this shouldn't be that should be the happiest day of the life, the day that the baby is baptized. But that's, you know, we find ourselves being taken in by the world. And what the world thinks is important, that we sometimes think is important, and we miss some of the most beautiful things in life. The time of the Holy Spirit working through water and word brings faith. Wow. That's, that's, that's beyond understanding. It is so wonderful. As we grow and as we get older in life, baptism means so much more to us because we have a lifetime to appreciate its value. Every time we lay to rest a faithful believer, we do so with the realization this individual has been baptized. They died with Christ and they are raised with him again in glory. Those are the things that are of value in our life. When we come and we partake of the Lord's body and blood and the Holy Supper, The Lord says, I'm not sure what I can do to give you a, a very meaningful and lasting impression of me. I will give you me. I will give you me. Come and partake of this holy sacrament. And so it's more than, oh, communion Sunday, I better sign up. And then come and, no. You, you go and tell your friends, I took holy communion yesterday. What's that? And so... We don't even try to explain it because it's not something they understand. There's joy in that. There's so much joy in knowing that the Lord, whose precious blood covers my sins, whose life is the life that I will enjoy with him forever in heaven. Perhaps it's not so much we forget things. Perhaps it's that we didn't think as highly of them as we ought to have when they happened. And so the Lord continues to remind us. He doesn't say, get away from me, you ingratious people who have no gratitude for me. 
No, he says, come back, come back, come back, come back. I'll fill you with even more. I'll fill you with even more joy. You know, family is the time when the children go off, children, young people, go off to college and away from home. Tough times, that, that separation there. You know, we think, and then we're happy for them. You know, I'm happy for the time when the children come back to the Lord. When they've been strained, and when they come back, and there is a child that has not come back to the faith. What joy there is in that. When we think of the blessings that we have in our salvation, and when we think of the blessings we have in our Lord Jesus Christ, there's nothing greater. There's no greater joy in our life than the realization that my Savior loves me. He gave his life for me. He lived and died for me. And now he has prepared a place for me eternally in heaven. And so we continue to, to bring home these points of emphasis so that people will hear them and so that it will work in their heart and so they will realize that above all, I am the most blessed of any of God's creation to know my Savior and to know His love for me. And so now we don't think of those family gatherings as people opposed to me and people that want to just shut me up and make me be quiet. Now I see them as souls that the Lord gave His life for. And now how, brother, sister, cousin, uncle, aunt, how can I, what can I do to encourage you to come with me to church? or read a portion of scripture with me, or have a devotion with me, or have a prayer with me. What can I do to help? What can I do to, to open a door for you so that you aren't filled with this anger and hatred towards God, but that you come to appreciate how much God loves you and what he did for you and for your salvation? Those are the meaningful things in life. We may have good friends, love to get together, watch a ball game with, or do something with, um, that's nothing compared to being able to enjoy the blessings of eternity in heaven with them. We let the world influence us too many times as to what's important and what's of a value. And all the while, we already have it. It's already ours. And so we encourage one another, not condescendingly, not with an attitude of superiority, not with the thought of, well, you're bad, I'm good, but how can we show you what the Lord has done for you. We had an opportunity again with the Gage and Bible School to bring that message to the children. We'll once again start bringing that message to the children again with our Sunday School classes in a few weeks. Those are valuable times. Those are valuable opportunities to learn. May God give us not only the strength and the ability, but the joy and the determination to want to encourage and instruct and train and bring that good news of salvation to our next generations, as also to ourselves. Amen. <clears throat> now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat>